and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Christeter, and I'm an Ableton Certified Trainer. And today I want to dive into one of the newer features in Live 11, which is the Bouncy Notes MIDI effect, which is a really cool tool that allows you to do some really interesting like MIDI delays with physics built into it and get some really cool, interesting sounds very, very easily. Before we dive too deep into it, I do just want to let you know if you are enjoying the content on the channel, please feel free to subscribe. I release videos every Monday and Thursday about different topics related to music production with Ableton Live. On top of that, I'm also streaming here on YouTube on Tuesdays and Fridays. So also, you're more than welcome to check those out. So let's talk a little bit first about uh, the bouncy notes. A lot of people have been asking about this, and uh, I want to mention where you find it because people have not been able to find it within their library. So this is in a specific live pack that is free if you own the sweet version of Live 11 called the Inspired by Nature Pack by Dylan Bashan. So if you have not downloaded this, go to your live packs folder, scroll to the bottom where it says available packs, click on that, find Inspired by Nature, download it, install it, and then it should be here underneath MIDI effects. Also, once you have downloaded it and installed it, uh, you can also find it in your Max for Live folder also under here MIDI effects. That's where you find it if you're looking for it. So uh, this is going to be just like any other MIDI effect. It's going to be on a MIDI track before your MIDI instrument. And essentially, it means that when I play a note, it's going to send it into this device, and then it's going to bounce on top of a piano roll. So if I play a note right now, I play one note, and you can see the ball bouncing representing the note, and it's going to keep bouncing. I play a different note, play another one. So there's a lot of really interesting controls here and a lot of really cool things we couldn't do. So I'm going to dive into hopefully pretty much everything, uh, at least all the features that are built into it. So first off, we have the number of voices up here in the top left corner. This is the number of notes you can play simultaneously. So if I play a bunch of notes, it's going to play all of them up to 16, 16 of them. And of course, you can increase this and decrease this. Right here is the lifetime of the notes. And this is a little confusing at first if you're not used to the system, um, but this is four bars right here. So we can change this to make this shorter. So if I have a lifetime of one bar, so it's going to last for less time. And if I go even shorter with it, in this case, this is a sixth note. It doesn't even have time to bounce. So you got to watch out for the length. And sometimes you want to be a little longer, you get more bounces. Sometimes you want to be a little shorter, get less bounces. Um, but this is a very, very important control right here. On top of that, uh, we can also set this up to automatically drop notes. So right now, playing a note every time I hit a note. If I switch this mode over here to release mode, that means if I hold down a note, it's not going to bounce until I like, let go of that MIDI note. So I'm hitting it, and now I let go, and then it bounces it. Or we could put it in auto mode. So in auto mode, it will just automatically start generating random notes for us. And you can see I've turned this on, but it's not bouncing yet, and that's because I need to hit the play button in live. So once I hit play, now it's going to start generating notes, in this case, every one bar. So if I turn this down, it's going to generate more notes. So now every quarter note is generating a note, and each one lasts for a half bar. So I can make this shorter. Again, they're not even having time to hit the notes yet. Or I can make these longer. And it's just generating a whole bunch of random notes for us, which is kind of cool, but we can make this sound a lot more interesting. But this is going to be the interval of it generating new notes, and this is going to be the length that those notes last. So uh, over, also in here, in this piano roll, we have two controls, one up here up top and one over on the right side. This is going to control the distance that the notes fall. Keep in mind, uh, with this control right here, distance equates to velocity as well. So not only is this going to take a longer time to drop, but it's also going to be louder as it drops from my higher spot. Versus if I turn this down, We're getting more bounces because they have less space to drop, but are also getting less velocity. So this kind of does two really important things, which is pretty handy. On top of that, we can adjust the motion or movement so it's not always playing the exact same note with this control up here. So if I turn this up, it's going to start at a particular location, and then in this case, it's going to move to the right and play higher notes. It's going to be bouncing around. Make this a little more subtle. And then I'm moving around, and each one of these notes that's being generated is moving a little bit to the right, or I can move it the other direction, a little bit to the left. Like that. Now you notice that when it hits the wall, when it hits either side, it bounces off that wall. We can change that behavior by clicking on this guy right here. So right now in bounce mode, if it hits either the left or the right side, you can see it's bouncing off of it. 
or we could set it to wrap, which means it's going to hit the left or right side and just keep moving and kind of wrap around to the other side. You can see it's bouncing around. And if we make this like a really large distance, you can see it bouncing around really far. Like that. Or we could randomize it so it could be bounce, it could be wrap, uh, it's random. Or we could just set it up to delete, which means if it hits the left or right side, it just dies. We don't get anything, so I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Once it hits the edge, they, they disappear. So we can play around with that a little bit. We can also change how it behaves when it hits the actual piano roll. Uh, so in bounce mode, you can, you've can you been hearing it bouncing up and down. If you set this to wrap, it's going to go back to where it started. So it's going to go back up top here. I set this really high. Or really low. Again, get different styles there, or we could randomize it between the two, which also sounds kind of cool. So right now we're getting a bunch of notes and a bunch of different behaviors, which is pretty cool. However, it sounds a little chaotic. It sounds like somebody's just kind of like slapping their face on a piano, which is not super pleasant. So we want to refine this a little bit and make it so it's not just fully chromatic by hitting this little uh, piano icon right here. And we can switch into different uh, keys, which is really great. So there's a bunch of built-in keys. So if, say, for example, I want to write a song in the minor key, I can pick minor and then pick my root note here. So say I want to be in like G sharp minor. Now, as, it, as it's bouncing, it's only going to bounce in that particular key, which can be a lot more pleasant than just a bunch of random notes. Uh, I'm also going to adjust the range here. So we also have a starting note, which is our lowest note, and then a range. So how many notes we go higher? So we can turn this down so we don't have like a super, super huge range. Cool. Getting a little closer, but not quite there yet. Other really cool controls that are really handy for playing around with this are all of the physics controls. So we can change the speed of the notes, the gravity of the notes, the mass of the notes, and the friction of them. All of these will make a big difference in terms of how they're going to behave and how they start bouncing. So if I start turning up the speed, you can see they're bouncing around faster or bouncing around slower. We can find a sweet spot in there. We can play with gravity. So gravity is going to make them fall faster, but also means they have more velocity when they actually hit the piano. And we can change the mass as well, which also changes the velocity. Make them smaller, as well as play with friction. So between all of these controls, as well as velocity and gravity connection, as well as a velocity and mass connection, uh, you get lots of different results. Which is pretty handy. So between those controls and all these controls, you get a lot of different results. In addition to that, we can also add in walls to block out certain areas of our bouncy area. So if I just click and drag in here, this is going to add a little wall, which means if a note hits this wall, it's just going to bounce off of it. If they get underneath it, they're going to bounce between the piano and the wall, or if they bounce on top of it, they're just going to get stuck there. Uh, so you can kind of block out different areas, either intentionally to like exclude certain notes or to purposely kind of like trap the balls in different places. which can, again, add a little more chaos, add a little bit more randomness to us, or in some cases, a little more control. You can also double click on them to delete them and then just click and drag to add new ones wherever you want to put them. So that can be really handy, again, for like a little more variety that you can toss in there. Uh, we have different note lengths, so we can make the notes a specific length or we can just set it to be automatic. We can quantize everything. This actually helps out quite a bit uh, to make it sound a little less chaotic. 
and all of a sudden we start to get something that sounds a little bit more musical as opposed to just random notes all the time. So we're getting something that sounds a little like that's usable. We can we can make something musical out of this. Out of the chaos, we can create something that actually sounds really interesting. Uh, on top of these controls right here, we also have a, like a fade out. We have a randomization to the length, and we also have a randomization to the direction. So this direction control here allows us to move it kind of like how far it goes in either left or right. But if say we had this set to zero, we could still randomize the direction. So in this case, it'll still be randomized going either left or right. And we can also combine the two together. So something like that sounds pretty cool. Uh, and again, it's randomizing either direction. And then we have velocity to height connecting how far it's falling to how much velocity you get out of it. So you have a bunch of ways to deal with velocity, whether it's height, whether it's mass, or it's gravity, or a combination of all three of those together. Uh, on top of that, we have this freeze control. So if we have a bunch of notes bouncing, I hit freeze, it just freezes it, and then you can hit it again to unfreeze it. That This filter control uh, is not going to do anything right now because we are in the auto mode, but if I have this turned off, filter mode basically means that uh, if I, if this is turned off, if I play any note, it's going to start generating notes based off of whatever key that I'm in. But if I turn this off, and, or turn this on, and I play a note that's outside of my key, like this note, for example, is not in the key of G sharp minor. So it still plays the note, but it doesn't bounce it. Whereas if I play a note that's in the key, it will bounce it. So filter excludes notes that are outside of the key from bouncing if you are not using the auto mode. That's all that really does. Uh, and then we also have uh, the velocity to ball connection here. We have the through control. This is kind of like a dry white control. So if this is turned 100%, when I play a note, it's playing the original note as well as the bounces, but if I turn this down and I play a note, you're not gonna hear the original note, you're only gonna hear the bounces. So here's my note, and then you hear the bounces. You can see the MIDI coming in first, and then we just get the bounces, or we can mix the two together. So kind of like a dry wet between the original notes you're playing and the notes that are being output. And once again, if you are in auto mode, I'm pretty sure this doesn't do anything because it's, it's just generating the notes for you. Uh, it still actually cancels those notes out. Uh, and then we have a gain control here for the MIDI coming out of it. That is essentially it. There's a lot of fun controls here. And as you kind of saw, it starts off sounding really kind of chaotic and not super pleasant at first. But once you dial it in, once you start tweaking the settings and kind of get things where you want them to be, you actually get a lot of really interesting controls. And of course, we could route the MIDI out of the bouncy notes into another MIDI track. So if I have an empty MIDI track right here, and I grab MIDI from this track and grab it post effects, and I record enable it, I should be able to record all that MIDI coming out of the bouncy notes. Here's all my MIDI. And a lot of it sounds really chaotic, so we can tweak some of the settings. Let's do a little bit more height. Turn this down a little bit. So we can tweak these settings here, record everything that it's doing. And because it's kind of random and kind of chaotic, most of the time it doesn't sound that great. But if you find like two or three bars or four bars that you really like, you could go in here, you could select those, you could loop those, and all of a sudden you have a cool, interesting, weird melody that you never thought of otherwise. So uh, you get, if you've been watching this channel a bunch, you know that I'm really into like random sound design and using randomization to generate ideas. This is a fantastic way to do it. You get all these notes in velocity, like the different velocities in key, really, really cool. The last feature I do want to mention is the drum rack mode right here. If this is turned on, uh, this will only send notes. It kind of connects to a drum rack. So if you have, let me just grab a drum rack right here. Uh, if you have a drum rack that has, say, for example, 16 drum sounds in it, it 
can tell how many sounds are in your drum rack and will only send those 16 notes. So for example, if I were to like delete some of these guys out of here, I actually get less notes within my, within my rack, my bouncy notes. Um, this probably sound chaotic. <laughs> this probably sound absolutely nuts, but here it sounds like. Well, here's my new beat from my new track. Um, but it only plays notes that connect to the notes in the drum rack. So if you had a drum rack with 32 sounds in it, it would send up to those 32 notes. But if you had a drum rack with four sounds in it, it would only send those four notes. So it connects directly to your drum rack if you want to use this with a drum rack, which could be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, that is basically it. Really cool device. A lot of fun stuff you can do it. I highly recommend it. I've been having a great time just like screwing around, playing with like adding walls in here, playing with different physics controls, seeing what I can come up with. And it's this kind of thing where it's like, it's a happy accident machine. You just play around with it for long enough and you're going to get something really cool out of it. So just make sure you're recording that MIDI when it does do something really cool. So that way you can loop it and use it in your track. So Hopefully you enjoyed watching it. that. If you did, uh, once again, please feel free to subscribe. It means a lot to me and it really helps the channel. And hopefully I will see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.